My name is Vahid Chitsas, part of Elite Mastermind Group. Thank you for being here. Thank you for doing this a little bit earlier. We had a little bit of a rescheduling today. It's a little bit chaotic today, but we got it all done. That uh, is go okay. ahead and introduce yourself to everybody. Let us know where you're tuning in from. Hi, everyone. I am currently in Irvine, California. My name is Jessica Gonzalez, and I started the Mommy Jane on Instagram, which has turned into um, the Mommy Jane neighborhood, I guess you could say, for lack of better words, which is a wonderful community um, that we are here to uplift everyone, encourage everyone to follow their passions and their purpose. And I'm so honored to be here today to discuss more with you. Awesome. So let's dive into it. Thinking Go Rich, Napoleon Hill stuff. When did you start? How did you start? You know, I stumbled across uh, Napoleon Hill um, just like everybody else says, when they're in the middle of a, of a crisis and a, a spiritual awakening, you know, when you're in your depths of your despair, that's when you find the self-help book. So I've always been aware of Tim Ferriss because my husband was always into business books and everything. But once I read Napoleon Hill, he opened up the gamut for me with um, more business related self-help books and just really got me on the path to a true awakening where I encouraged myself to meditate daily, um, start eating better be more mindful of how I talk to my children, my spouse, myself. It was this just this burning desire that started inside of me because of this book. And that's funny that I say that because that's a huge element is, the, is desire. That's a huge topic that runs um, throughout, throughout the, all of his books, actually, is how the importance of having that desire and um, knowing how to use it. Definitely. So walk us through what will be some of the top principles that you think individuals, specifically the brand new entrepreneurs, they're trying to build their business. What are some of the principles that they should really be conscious about and utilize for their business? I think it's really important to start. They always say this, you guys, you guys really need a very good and healthy routine in the morning. Meditation is key because it starts to raise your vibration the minute you wake up. When you wake up with a purpose and gratitude every day and, and, and a chance to center yourself, you're not worried about the other stuff that's happening around you. You're focused on one thing at a time. I, I, it is a world of a difference the days I meditate versus the days that I don't. So I think a really important thing for entrepreneurs is set a, a, a great routine. I know everyone always says it, but we say it for a reason. If I fall off track, it's because my routine's off track. And how we talk to ourselves and our dialogue changes everything. Uh, we, are, we are raised on, on such conditioning with our cultures and our families. And we hold on to so much that we were taught instead of trying to open up ourselves to the possibility of, of our own thoughts and our own ideas and really truly believing in ourselves and being our biggest cheerleader. You know, it's really difficult to be an entrepreneur. It's a very scary path. You have no one backing yourself but yourself. So you have to be your biggest cheerleader every day and you're only gonna fall back on yourself. So if you keep your vibe high from the minute you wake up, when things, when contrast comes your way, it, you have less of an opportunity to fall victim to any of it and, and fall into old patterns and fall into old behaviors and fall into old dialogues that don't serve us. You know, um, I, I always tell my children, don't talk to yourself so negatively, talk to yourself like you would your best friend. So I think dialogue is really important. Um, being focused on your goal. You don't just uh, put, they always say this too. You don't just put in a Google map. You put in an address when you're doing Google maps. You don't just start driving. When you go to a uh, Starbucks, you don't just order the whole menu. You, you think about the drink that you want and you order it. So when it comes to your um, passion and what you really want out of life, what your goal and your, your heart desire truly is, get in the details and talk like you already have it. I, I always do that. I always act like I already have something or already possess something. Um, and I just never lose my imagination. I keep my imagination going and firing at all times. And I think that's a really important tool that we shouldn't lose, that we are always told, oh, that's not really there, or you believe in magic too much, or you're such a dreamer, get back to reality. I, I think those are things that hinder us from success and we really need to hone in and focus on on obtaining that again as an adult and and if you've lost it then it's not too late i promise <laughs> i agree with that 100 percent. you said something important that i want people to maybe you could give us a little bit of a hint on what do you mean as a parent you said the way you speak to your husband the way you speak to your children what does that mean after really thinking grow rich what what were a couple of things that you could tell us that you modified and you upgraded well, people like to focus on what they don't want. 
They always say, why can't I, especially kids, why can't I have that? Why don't we do this? When you focus on the things that you currently have and speak in the dialogue, I am in, in a committed and loving relationship and already have that abundance in your mind. It, everything falls into place. I know it sounds like crazy magic, but it really is so true. I've gone through ups and downs in my marriage. We've been together almost 10 years at this point. And just like everybody else, you know, some years are better than others. But what keeps us going and keeps me on track and what I want to show my children is it's really important how we talk to each other. I've never called my husband a bad name in front of my children. I think it's really important that we you know, are more aware of how much they're taking from us for their relationships later on in life. So um, he's Napoleon is a huge firm believer in how we speak to ourselves, which then goes out to what we do it in public and stuff and how we're viewed as a public person. If you're an entrepreneur, you don't want to be seen as a jerk. You want to put your best face forward every single day. And that was a big thing that I wanted to bring to my community as well. We have a lot of stigma in my industry and I wanted to make sure that Moving forward, it's up to us to break that stigma on how we behave. If we don't do the right thing all the time, then we're always going to have that burden around us. But if we're constantly giving back to our community, constantly improving our relationship with our family and our friends, then where's the stigma? It's not available. I agree with that. And, and I believe that's how it is with any industry or any type of business that is unknown. People are scared of what they don't know. If they get educated on it, they won't be scared. And that's very, very simple. Like my mom, when she started originally beginning of, of what is an electric car, she's like, I don't hear this, the, the engine. Is it running? I'm like, mom, it's electric. So you don't do it. So literally you had to like little by little acclimate it. Now it gets to a point where she's like, why is this car makes noise? Like this is not an electric car. This is not good. I'm all like, you know, a few years ago, you were anti-electric cars. You didn't know if you're going to get stuck in the street. You didn't know how you could. So now you're in love with Priuses. Like, I don't understand what changed. So that's when they don't understand it. They try to stop it. They try to block it. They try to not just like same thing with Bitcoin. Same thing. Same thing with CBD. Same thing with everything else. It just doesn't mean you have to be a consumer of it. You just need to get educated on what it is, how you're able to utilize it. I don't know. I'm mumbling on. But no, I love this. I love that. this. I think it's important. Um, one of the things that Napoleon talks about is find something that you're always going to be learning in. You know, I w it was very important for me when I was leaving my uh, role as a stay-at-home mom and moving into the world of, of, of working again, what was going to entice me and keep me on that path of always learning, always wanting to learn. And, you know, luckily with plant medicine, there's always something we can learn every single day. But it's really important. You really have to, uh, people always have to believe it when they see it. But you got to see it or believe it, then see it. You know what I mean? It's, it's, it's so Definitely. backwards, but it really is. It's really important that we um, put you know, faith, trust, and pixie dust more into the world. There's a lot more magic out there. And I think that's a, there's a reason why Harry Potter is such a success story is because I think deep down we really truly believe there is some magic to us being here. And um, obviously Earl Nightingale and Napoleon Hill and Rockefeller understood it. And it's up to us to take those exact tools and apply it to modern, modern living today. And find no, definitely I agree. So what would be your second principle that you think people need to utilize? Um, persistence. I know there's so many. It's so hard to pick. Yeah, and I always put people on the spot. And uh, But, I mean, you touched up on burning desire. So let's go back to this. Okay. Let's say somebody um, is starting, like you started from, from, from taking care of the household. Now you get into entrepreneurship. That must have been scary. How did you do that transition? Because everybody goes, I mean, I get messages every day. It's a scary, how do I start? It's a scary, how do I overcome my fears? It's a scary, my husband said no. It's a scary, my wife says no. It's a scary, I'm about to lose my girlfriend. So there's a lot of fear in making that transition. But there is that deep inside want. They want to make that transition, but they're kind of being pulled by friends, family, relative circumstances. So how do you develop your burning desire under those circumstances? I stopped listening to everybody and started listening to myself. I know that's counterintuitive because you guys are here to get advice, but deep down, you know what you want. And deep down, you know what you're capable of. And if, if you're going to listen to the people around you, 
90% of those people aren't doing what they love with their life and they're not satisfied with their life. So why would you take advice from people that aren't really satisfied to begin with? That's, that's what I find as a big fear is we're taking advice from the wrong people and we're listening to the wrong people when we should be listening to only one person and that is it. And when you tap into yourself, you tap into everything else, God, source, whatever you guys believe, but there's so much more internal than we realize. And no, that will guide us in that way. Most people don't become entrepreneur. They don't flourish. They don't become millionaires and multimillionaires and, and all of these different things that we consider in our society success or steps to success. They don't achieve those. And the main reason is that I'm pretty sure you experienced it because there's so many people that are just nays. They're dream stealers. And there are literally all over the place. So if you don't watch out, somebody out there wants to, I mean, think about it. Here's a good example. Let's say you live in Irvine. I live in mm -hmm. Woodland Hills. I'm in LA, suburbs of LA. I'm about 17 miles away from LAX. So for people that are watching from all over the world, you know, she's about an hour and a half, give or take, about 60 miles away from where I am. So my question would be, let's say, you live in Irvine, and you want to move to a bit better house, better location, better all that. Just by moving, most of your friends are going to object to that. Because if you move 10, 20, 15 miles away, that would be just more difficult for them to get to you, more difficult for you to get to. So just by you just money to get a bigger house, right? There's so many naysayers, let alone us thinking that there won't be any negativity when we want to go and just go become an entrepreneur and change our careers and be in a different field. It's just crazy how many people say no first. Isn't that scary? It's so unfortunate because I, I've had the pleasure and like pain of having near-death experience. And so that really kicked my butt into high gear, realizing that you guys, we don't have as much time as we think we have. And why not today? And why not us? Why not you? There, there, why not? There's a million reasons why you should versus reasons why you shouldn't. So take this as a, as a sign today, as an opportunity for you to really hone in and, and find out what you want. If it's fame that you want, who cares? If it's fortune that you want, the universe wants to help you too. And it's really about believing in what you want. Don't go after something that isn't authentic. Don't go after something that isn't you because you'll find roadblocks. You'll wonder why it's not working out. It's because you're not finding what you want. If you once the minute you're honest with yourself of what you truly want for this world and how you can give back, not just selfishly, but what you can do with that fortune, what you can do with that fame. How are you going to help the greater good? How are you going to raise the conscious of the future? not only for ourselves, but for our children and, and, and so on and so forth. So it's really up to us to live every day like it's our last. I know that sounds macabre, but you got to just do things like that sometimes to, to put you in fear. Remember the burning of the boats. Remember right. when the, he burned the boats. You got to live like you burned your boat and there's no going back. That's how you got to live every freaking day. When your feet hit the ground, that's when you go, this is the day and that's it. And you live every day like this is the day because this is the day. This is it right now. No, definitely. Listen, you got to dig a big hole six feet deep, plant your flag, make sure you put concrete around it. Nothing is going to give that a uh, shake. It's just as simple as that. You just got to go out there and just make it happen. So it makes sense for you to plant your flag and go all in and give it a good push. Give it a good go. You know, I see so many people that have false stars. Nothing wrong with that. I call those practice runs. So, and sometimes yeah. I kind of keep my practice runs to myself, not even my wife. She doesn't know. Here is the story. Here, let me tell you what's going on. So we were watching, I'm a big fan of UFC. I'm not a big fan of boxing. I love big, I'm a big fan of martial arts, especially jujitsu. Groundwork where yeah. with the minimal damage, you can disable the person, right? So I'm watching UFC and my wife is like, how could your wife watch this? This is barbaric. They're like punching each other. They bleed. They break each other's nose. Like, what is this that you're watching? And you know what I told her? I said, I don't think you understand this. But when I go to the office, I'm getting punches in the face too. I'm just not bleeding externally. 
I'm, re- I'm bleeding inside. I was on my ass the other day because I got knocked down by my competitor. So just because we're videotaping it and televising it, and you're not seeing me on the floor, you know, knocked out, where it took the breath out of me, and I don't even know where I am, you're not seeing that. This is just exact copy of what I go through on a daily basis. So I take punches. So this, to me, is like real life happening. Now, you're not seeing it. That's okay. But I'm going through that. That's called business. If I'm not getting punches, if I'm not bleeding, if I don't have bones broken, that means I'm not in business. That means I'm not doing anything right, right? So I was telling my wife, I was like, you got to be okay with this. At least you know they're survived. How do you know if I'm going to survive? Oh, dang. Oh, my gosh. I love this so much, and it's so important. And I think businesses and entrepreneurs, you have to show the ups and downs. You have to show the struggles. You have to show that you are human, and not every day is perfect. And some days you're freaking out because that is so normal. We all have those hiccups. We all have those moments. And maybe another entrepreneur will be watching your stories and feel inspired and realize, wait a minute, I'm not the only one that feels this way. Okay, we're in this together. It's, we are totally in this together. It's a camaraderie. We are getting our faces beat, like you're saying, physically and mentally every single day. Because when you love something, you do that. You put yourself out there so that you are putting yourself at stake to burn, to get beat, to get broken. Because if you're not putting your blood, sweat, and tears on it, is it even worth it? No, I, I agree with that. I mean, think about this. We have so many parents that they think their kid's role model should be somebody else. To me, it just doesn't make sense. My role model is my mom. I always watch my mom work hard. She give it all. She, I mean, she's a people person. She's got a big hair salon. She just keeps everybody happy. You know, even employees, they mess up. She doesn't let them go. She gives them chances, chances. I mean, she's just a good person and a good businesswoman. And she, so I always, so if, if I go back to school today and if I'm in the middle of school or whatever, elementary school, and they're like, who's your role model? I'm like, I want to grow up just be like my mom. She's good in business. She takes care of the household. I mean, she keeps my dad alive. If it wasn't because of my mom, my dad would not be alive. It's just simple as that, right? So she takes care of all of that. And she maintains to put all her friends together, family together, and she has bad days too. But then why can't we as parents be putting it on the line every day so our children could use us as role models? Not Spider-Man, not Superman. I mean, who the hell is Superman and Spider-Man? They change them every single four or five years anyway. I can't keep track of who the guy is. What I remember who Superman and Spider-Man was it's changed two times already. So I'm even confused who I'm watching, let alone my children. Fair enough. I love that. It's so important, you guys. Our children are watching us, and they, maybe they want to be an entrepreneur too. I know when I was working for somebody else, I was miserable. All I thought was, one day I want to work for myself. One day I want to work for myself. So why not give your children that opportunity by showing them that it's possible, showing them that you can live the life that you love, showing them that you can live a, a idealistic world i mean really you can't everybody says that it's a, it's a dream situation but why not live the dream why not it's totally no, possible i agree with that and and you gotta you gotta think about it right now with social media what i was telling my buddy the other day is that a lot of people what you see on the image and, and the, the reason why i tell you this i'm calling out a couple of my my homies to to put them on the blast over here hopefully they won't watch this but if they watch it they'll be pissed off so you know <laughs> I know that their businesses are doing okay, but they're not doing great. But what they put on social media is as if their business was thriving. I mean, millions of dollars are coming in. I mean, shit is happening for them, all of that. So I'm thinking, I'm like, you know, last week we had this conversation in a private setting. You told me it's not going as good as you want it to go. But Mm. why are you putting that on social media that it is going great? I don't get that. Why don't you be transparent? And the fake people that are there to think, you know, they're looking for you to do great all the time. That's that's ridiculous. We're not ever marriage is perfect all the time. No, I mean nothing that we do in this world goes according to plan hundred percent. You will have some challenges and turbulences, but why not embrace those? Why come out and 
kind of fake it or kind of put that on. It's not authentic to put something that's not true if I come in and I exam that. So you you gotta you gotta. I mean, you know, I don't know. That's just I, my idea. I I agree. I see a lot of in my industry as well. Um, where people will show things that aren't really exactly a hundred percent. And you wonder, just show the behind the scenes. People want to see the good and the bad because that's real. We were raised on so much reality television the last 20 years. Give us something that's really real. Give us the, the, the days where, you know, stuff's ha happening and it's not working out. And, and you're just like, what do I do next? You know, because you never know who's going to watch you to give you that push. Like, Hey, you know what helped me this. And then you can decide whether you want to take that advice or not. But we, it takes a village to raise humans. And I think it doesn't stop at, at young child. We need to be raised always by our village. And it's up to us to decide who our village is. But we need that help. We can't be so egotistical that we can do everything by ourselves. But trust yourself, too, at the same time. Don't lose yourself in all of the, the help and commotion. Listen to yourself first, but don't be too big that you can't take advice as well. It's like it's a, a balance you have to find yourself. I can't tell you how to do it personally, but you guys know what I'm talking about. Those that have the balance, you already know. I agree with that. And we got to stop giving a shit what other people think. And we got to care about what we think. Or or I'm going to rephrase that. I do care what my wife thinks. I do oh. care what my, what, what my daughter thinks. I, do, I mean, she's too young, one-year-old, but she's got a lot of opinions, even at one. So, you know, I do care what my mom thinks. Those, I'm okay because they're in my inner circle. But then for you to care what the other guy thinks, you know, hundreds of miles, thousands of miles away, and you not being authentic, what because you worry about what they're going to think. What they should be thinking is that you are authentic, and they should love you for who you are, and this is who you are. And if they don't like it, well, guess what? They can find a new tribe. There is nothing wrong with that. It's totally fine. You know, I'm not looking to please hundreds of thousands of people. I'm here to just help this first level of people that I care and make sure that we're okay. But other than that, whoever wants it will join. Whoever doesn't want it, you don't have to join. I mean, God bless America. We live in, you know, a free land where you have that opportunity. But I don't think we're that free, though. I think we're just walked up by other people's opinions constantly. Constantly. That's, that is the saddest part of all is, is the fact that we are, we are so worried about being ourselves or maybe we don't even know who we are because we're so in the idea of what we thought we should be for everybody else. You know, you just lose yourself so much because you've created this persona that isn't even you. So it's about peeling off those layers, finding yourself, and just running with it un unashamed, you know, really, it's so important to live your life authentically going into this next decade. I think that's going to be a really big theme for 2020 is just being ourselves um, unapologetically. Definitely. I agree with that 100%. I mean, don't go put naked pictures on your Instagram <laughs> saying that he said, yeah. you know, be authentic, show everything. You know, there have a little bit of a filter. <laughs> you know, I'm just saying, like, have a little bit of a filter. You know, don't go put everything on, you know. If you're doing anything illegal, don't put it on Instagram because that will be used in the court of law to, you know. So just, you know, have be some mindful. filters. But, but be authentic too, you know. It's crazy. Some people think it's illegal. But listen, I want to appreciate you taking this time and being with us on our, on our channel. Thank you so much. Uh, I looked at your Instagram account. It's popping. I looked at the, your, your, it was that the link in your bio? Is that article about you? No, I put it up because I am also a fellow mother. Um, I have been featured in High Times magazine and a few other magazines for my story as well. But uh, that was not my HuffPo article. That is actually in order to, you know, in from for how I am in my industry, in my personal story, I don't have competition because I'm a one man show. I'm just a mom who's an advocate for, um, you know, a conscious living and, uh, and, and just doing what is true for you. You know, that's really what it is. It's not even about the plant medicine. It's not even about the parenting. It's about everything in life and living it to your most authentic self and to the fullest every single day. And thank you so much for noticing. I really appreciate it. Anytime. I, I'll definitely will be doing more collaboration with you since you're even close by you're in Irvine. Or in I drive. Life, so. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Well, that 405 sometimes pisses me off. So, you know what I was thinking? I'm going to tell you this. This is an inside joke. I was telling one of my friends. So many people will not understand what the heck I'm about to just say. They spend about a billion dollars adding an extra lane to the 405 freeway 
for a segment of it, not the whole thing, for a segment of it. So it didn't do that much. It did a little bit. I noticed it a little bit. But here is a suggestion. What if we would have took that billion dollars, we would have donated equally among all the households in the area within a radius of 20, 30 miles. All of us would have been retired. All of us would have had a good life. We would have not needed to get on the 405 to go to work. Therefore, all lanes would have been empty for people that are traveling across the country. The local people wouldn't have been on the 405. Wouldn't that that been a better plan than just adding one extra lane that took four years to build, a billion dollars, that just maybe helped about five minutes of your traffic time? To, oh so, gosh. I don't know. Don't, don't this is why you're the elite people. mastermind. <laughs> Don't pick me for mayor because I do crazy stuff like that. I'll just I give you the money. Don't get run. on the freeway. Just <laughs> give me the phone. money. Don't get on the freeway. That's the easiest way of eliminating the, the traffic. You pay us not to drive, right? <laughs> Listen, if I give you $5 million, most families in California, in Los Angeles, will be retired. They don't need any more money. Go put in a bank. Go put in a policy that gives you 5 to 8% average. You get about you know ten, twelve thousand dollars a month. You retire. You don't need to work. I guess well that that creates a problem. Maybe they want to go on trips. And, I don't know. But it, it would have been less traffic. I it love that idea. Less. I'm on board one hundred and ten percent with that. And I look forward to working with you again in the future. This has been such a pleasure and such an I honor. I appreciate it. Thank you so much. Talk to you soon. Thank you guys. Goodbye. Take care. Bye bye.